All right, we got a dual clutch here. I wasn't going to do a video on this. Is uh, there's a guy, uh, Ford Tech Macaluco, I believe is his name. I hope I didn't screw that name up. There's a good video on it from Ford, but um, we got this one from Luke, and I screwed it up. And I'm going to show you how I screwed it up and what you need to do to keep from screwing it up. Um, first thing we need to do is when you take this apart. Now I've already taken this apart so the snap ring's not all the way down on there. So you take that snap ring out, take this hub out. There's going to be a snap ring that holds this on here. This is not down all the way. So you got to push it down just a little bit and you take this snap ring out. And then you get uh, this tool from Adapter Case. If, if you don't want to use the Ford tools, they also make a tool to put it in, but I don't, they didn't bring me the tool to put it in. So I used a pry bar, <clears throat> went in pretty easy. I used the tool to push it down. I used this bolt over here, the pry bar, and it worked pretty good. Um, Put this piece to push on it down in there. I should have put that first. And I don't know if you can see in there. We need to get that down in the center. It's going to push this off. Pushed off. Lift that off. You're gonna pull your motors out of the side so that you can get these out. Now, found out from one of our other shops that you don't always get everything that I got in this kit, and that's where the problem came in. <clears throat> got a new bearing, new washers, got new forks, and when you get these forks. They're going to have these retainers on there. They were sitting on there just like so. So I put the forks on. Did not know I needed to take these retainers off. Actually, I think they were facing. I think they were facing this way. Yeah, I think they were facing this way. change these forks out <clears throat> see these lines right here these lines got to match they got to line up also if you look on the here and here's the number one nine uh, one two one six oh five eight six these numbers right here got to match so this oh five eight six goes with this fork and this uh, oh one one six goes with this one here. You see the old one one six. So once you get these all in there, then you're supposed to pull these off. And I didn't know that. So if you don't take these off, what you do is when you put the clutch on, and you go in here and you actually you release the clutch. You got to put the tool in here, turn counterclockwise 14 turns, and you'll hear it disengage. <clears throat> what happens is these pop up and they'll be popped up like that and they'll be rubbing on the back side of the clutch problem with that is once you disengage the clutch you've got to have a tool to put it back compressed before you can put it back in here also on this uh, bearing there's a line up tabs right here where this uh, bottom, or actually the top throttle bearing will ride on the bottom fork and the bottom bearing will ride on the this fork. 
Also, uh, what I did is these will come off of there. So I got some really high temp grease and just a very small amount, just enough to keep these from popping off of there. I don't want it melting and getting off into the clutch. So I got to wait for the clutch to show up. And I'll show you how I put it in last time. Actually went pretty easy. Uh, and how you need to line it up after that. All right, we'll see if this goes as well as it went last time. Uh, they decided in the meantime, they didn't want to put the loop clutch in it. Now we're putting a Ford clutch in it because it's $300 cheaper. Well, it's $300 cheaper because you don't get the forks and you don't get this retainer. So there's that. So if you want to go cheaper out, you can get half the parts for from Ford and the clutch is like $300. You want to get it from Luke at $660. And you get the forks, you get the retainer, you get all that crap. So there's a seal here and there's a seal inside here. Probably a good idea to change them while you got this out. 30 torques on here. All right, you got the short fork that goes over here. And let's see, where are my bolts? 45 torques it goes on the fork itself Still the same deal, match the numbers up with the numbers on the bolts, line the lines up. Yeah, I need the long fork. Goes over here.
Alright, then you line the bearing up. There's a couple tabs here that I want to go on the way it's supposed to go on. There we go. And we got this grease that they want you to put on the input shafts. Yeah. There's a box of that converter that was delivered to the boiler. Back, right back there by the back door. Yes, sir. Converter's still in it. Thanks, sir. <laughs> and like I said before, I'm going to put just a just a dab on there help hold this keep it from bouncing off when you're putting the clutch on And I put this tool that you pull the clutch out with. I use it to lift the clutch in there. And you're going to start onto the splines. that off and we use this part of the tool to push it down <coughs> and we're going to use this off the foot press over there and put that in there and push on uh, right there And get it to stand up. Okay. Got this great big pry bar. Hopefully it goes as easy as it went last time. It went pretty easy. snap ring you're supposed to replace it each time it goes in right there taper up Take this, you line that mark up with that mark. Just 
See if we can line this up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Got that mark lined up to that mark. Now this opening of the snap ring needs to go around that. There's a tab in there. This one it's right there. On the loop clutch it was right there on that mark. Well, don't want to pushing that snap ring out. Alright now we got that all set. Everything's free. No god awful noises. Now, the way they've been doing this, they took an old motor and uh, using it to unlock the clutch. And it works, but it don't work very well. You're supposed to count 14 turns. The socket don't fit well. Let me see if I can put a pair of vice grips on it and see how that does. I still don't think it's going to work very well. Like I said, it does work. I don't know if this is going to sit on there very well. Let's see how it does. You should be able to hear. It's one, two, three, four. You hear it disengage. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And there's the end of it. That went pretty well. I heard it reset. So we'll do the same thing over here. That one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Here's the end of it. About fifteen and a half, sixteen turns. Heard it reset. Now it should turn. Alright, this triangle has got to match up with the dot on your flywheel, otherwise it vibrates. So I'm going to mark this so it's easy for them to see it. This went much easier with these pliers than it did with that socket they tried to make work. Mark this. My paint marker is getting low. go right. 
get some anti-seize here. Ford says users. I don't think it matters. I already put a little bit. You just put a little anti-seize on the outside here. A little bit on the splines. Same thing on this one. Now, before I had to turn this a little bit. There we go. Just make sure it's all the way up in flush. Let's see. It takes a smaller one. this one and there we go